You like that tree? Mother Nature. Good job, Eric. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how we install plywood. So we framed out this patio cover in a couple days and then this is a video of us installing the plywood. Uh, we installed 5 8 T111 face down. So that way when you look up it looks like tongue and groove. I pinch you right here and then just snap that. Okay. So as you can see there, one of the first steps we always do when installing plywood is we'll snap a chalk line. So we'll pull usually 48 and a quarter, depends on the type of sheet, but we'll pull 48 and a quarter off one end of the fascia and then do the same on the other end and then snap a chalk line. And then the entire first row of sheets is set on that chalk line. So that way the entire first row is perfectly straight and then it helps make the next row straight and then the next. And it goes a lot smoother that way. So the nailing pattern we use is a 6 and 12. Uh, we go 6 inches on center on the edges and then 6, or, I'm sorry, 12 inches on center in the field or what they call the intermediate. And that's the building code, the residential code minimum. So that nail gun we're using is a Bostitch coil nailer. And we used to use just a regular, you know, 21 degree framing nail gun for all the plywood. But when you're, if you, if you ever ran plywood, you'll realize you start to, you'll have to change the, the clip a lot. So I invested in uh, the coil nailer, which holds like what a hundred nails or something like that. And it was a really big help. It makes it go a lot faster that way. Uh, you can see we stagger all of our seams at least one bay. Usually we'll do a, you know two bays but in this case the existing we had to frame this patio um, kind of based off the existing house framing which was built in the 50s so there was kind of a lot of ripping of the sheets you know like it wasn't all just eight foot centers it was kind of landing you know a little less sometimes a little more so we had to kind of we, we wasted a lot of sheets on this roof because of that but it is what it is We do, um, we snap lines or we'll use like that four foot level, how you see there, and we'll, um, we'll mark the center of the rafter. So that way we don't miss the nails when we're nailing it. You'll see a lot of guys when they're doing like production framing on, you know, houses, they'll just be really fast with their plywood and that's great and all. And I'm sure a lot of these guys are really good and they're not missing the nails, but if you're not, if you're just eyeballing it, you're going to miss a lot of nails, which we call shiners. So that means when you're underneath the patio and you look up, you'll see a bunch of nails, you know, popping through that miss the rafter. They'll be sticking out the side of the rafter or just completely missed it all together. And it, for a patio roof, especially one like this, that's not going to get a ceiling. It's going to look ugly when you're underneath it and you look up and you see a bunch of shiners. So we just take the time and we either snap the lines or we'll pencil them on and then um, that way we don't miss the nails. Makes for a better finished product. Takes a little more time but um, comes out a lot nicer that way. Here we're just doing that um, last row of sheets that go into the existing house sheathing which this house sheathing in the 50s it was like a 1 by 8 board or something like 1 by 8 tongue and groove very common with these old houses. New houses you'll see like OSB. Um, but these older houses were built a little. Maybe the layout wasn't as good back then. Or the quality control. But the materials were definitely stronger back then. I will say that. We had that um, electrical. That overhead electrical coming in right there. Those are always a pain in the butt. But. It is what it is. You got to deal with it. So we had to notch the plywood for that. We try to not make like a big ugly notch. I mean, we can only do so much, but 
And we try to make a nice tight notch without fighting it too much, you know. So we'll take our time with those two and we'll um we'll cut a little notch out. As you can see happening right there. And then that little hole in the back, we'll um we'll put a nailer back there and then we'll uh fill that little hole too. So that way the roofing, you know, if you're walking up there and you step right there, it's not just a, a hole. <laughs> You know, you're not going to roll your ankle right there or something. So there you see we filled it in. Uh, here we are just blowing off the roof. All the plywood's down. It looks good. Which way does that need to go? I mean, if anything came out the front, not the back, you never would have seen the back. Now, what's happening here is we weren't hired to roof this patio. The owner is going to have his entire, he's got like a double shingle roof on there, and he's hiring some roofer to re-roof the entire roof, but that's going to be the next week, and it's supposed to rain, you know, like this upcoming weekend so he asked us to dry it in for him so that's what we're doing we just got some kind of shingle underlayment and uh we're just stapling it down and then we'll put a flash and seal product where the shingles meet the edge of that underlayment so that way it's a temporary um leak fruit leak free roof so if it does rain it's not going to get the plywood wet and it's not going to um, get water into his house and then when the roofer comes he'll just rip all this off and throw it away see and that's how we do it all right guys i appreciate you watching the video um let me know if you got any questions take care thanks bye